Today, we're taking a look at the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit after 100 miles. Twenty two point four two miles, seven minutes, twenty three seconds per mile today, getting in my last long run of this marathon training plan, this time with the Heartbreak Hill Running Company. They had an event that was co-sponsored by Nike and Martin uh, where they had a supported 20 mile run. They bust us all down towards Washington Park. We ran around the park a little bit and then ran along the lakefront, looped back around uh, Addison and then headed back towards the store. They had three water stops for us uh, with Martin gels all along the way, which was a pretty amazing event. I'll talk a little bit more about the nutrition for this particular run tomorrow when I talk about the Martin calf 100 that they had available for us as a sneak peek before it was technically announced or released which was pretty awesome to try and a nice surprise i had no idea that it was going to be on the course for us to be able to try uh because today what i want to talk about though is the vaporfly four percent flying it after 100 miles. Now, I recently did a couple of videos on the Vaporfly 4%. That was with the version one uh, with the upper that was on that particular shoe. And that shoe for me, probably I could have stretched it a little bit further, but I had a couple of things going on with it where I retired that shoe at 150 miles. Mainly is because the upper was separating 
from the midsole right around kind of the edges of my foot where my pinky toe was and where my big toe was right around those spots the glue was starting to lose some of its adherence there also i was getting a bubble underneath the rubber on the left foot so a couple of things going on the foam itself was doing great the carbon fiber plate doing great it was just some of those other things that made it feel like it wasn't a shoe that i could bring on long runs anymore so i retired it this week I got the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit version to 115 miles with today's long run. And this is a shoe that I've treated very differently than the Vaporfly 4% version one. That shoe, I beat it up. I really wanted to see like how much abuse could that shoe take. I took it on trail runs, I took it on recovery runs, I took it on rocky terrain, pavement, all sorts of different kinds of terrain just to see what it could do. And I think it really took its toll. This particular shoe I've used a little bit more traditionally. I haven't raced in this shoe, not that I can recall, but I have used it for tempo runs, interval work on the road, and also for long runs. This week was a 22 mile run, last week was a 20 mile run, and the shoe has been absolutely fantastic for me. Uh, in terms of the feel of the midsole, the midsole still feels like it's brand new. Uh, I can't tell that it is uh, 115 miles into this shoe. It feels fantastic to me. Uh, the one thing that I will note is though, I think that the Zumax foam on the Flyknit version of the Vaporfly is a little bit stiffer than it was on the version one. And so uh, it, the version one, I don't know if it's just that it was an older shoe uh, and like over time it degrades a little bit or what, or maybe it started out uh, as a different or a slightly different formulation, but the version one sent a little bit more plush. It felt a little bit uh, softer in terms of the step-in feeling. This one felt a little bit more firm, but uh, definitely something that I enjoyed running in, especially on those longer miles. Now, I kind of had two different, very different experiences with the shoe over the last two weeks, 20 mile run last week, 22 miles this week. Last week uh, on the 20 mile run, around mile uh, about 15 or so, I started feeling like uh, I wish I had a little bit more cushion in my left foot, right underneath like the pads of my feet. Uh, that lasted for a couple of miles till about mile 18 or so. So that was a little bit of a concern. Had had me thinking, well, maybe this shoe is starting to age. But on this run, the 22 mile run, I didn't feel that at all. The ZoomX foam had plenty more to give. I didn't, I didn't have a fantastic run today. I had an okay run, not great, uh, but the shoes held up absolutely fantastically. The thing that uh, was also notable over the last two weeks specifically was uh, the Flyknit upper uh, uh, started to cut into my ankles two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, I had a pair of socks that they normally cover my ankles just fine, but for whatever reason, the sock had slid down below my ankle or below the level of the fly knit here. And this part started to cut into the ankles on each side. And so that is a little bit of a blood stain that's there because it cut into me uh, a little bit. I was able to keep the run going though. So it wasn't like a showstopper, but something that definitely now, every time I put on these shoes, I make sure that the socks are pulled up all the way and that that part of my ankle is covered by cloth and it hasn't been a problem. Otherwise, the Flyknit is holding up fantastically well. I love Flyknit. I never felt like it was a heavy material and I've run through it, water with it. I've sweat a ton in it and I never really felt like it was a material that needed fixing. So I enjoy running in this shoe quite a bit, especially for today. Uh, I ran with a couple of other people uh, through the water towards the end of the run. And I wasn't leading the pack at that point. And so it wasn't my choice to go through the water, but we all went through it anyway. And some of the people who were with me were like, I've never done that before, but it's nice. And I was like, running through water is great. You guys should all try it, especially later in the run when your feet are tired, uh, it's nice to cool off your feet, but also it loosens up the material on the upper just a little bit. And in and the late stages of a long run, that's exactly where you might want a little bit of a change up in terms of what it feels like on the top of your foot. Not that this shoe is uncomfortable by any means. Any shoe is going to be uncomfortable when you're at about mile 19 of a run. So moving on to the wear pattern on the midsole slash outsole. Now, like I said, I think that the ZoomX foam on this particular Vaporfly 4% 
flying it is a little bit harder than it was on the version one. And I think that shows here when you look at the wear pattern on this shoe. The wear pattern on the version one, it's similar in terms of where my feet are striking the ground, but here in the back right part of the right shoe uh, is where uh, it looked the most chewed up. Here it's a little bit shaved down, but it's not nearly as chewed up and torn as kind of I was expecting it to look at about 115 miles. Uh, the right pad here is starting to wear down a little bit in terms of the rubber, but otherwise it's a little bit discolored, but the outsole I think looks just absolutely pristine. Same thing going on on the other shoe, on the left hand shoe as well. The outer back part of the heel, there's a little bit of shaving going on in terms of the zoom x foam but it's not peeling it's not falling apart it's not kind of like chipping away like it was uh in the version one so i think that the zoom x foam in terms of the wear pattern on the outsole is doing really well and it seems to be the same rubber that we found in version one too which is just surprisingly durable and long lasting i don't know if it's a much more expensive kind of rubber or what it is but i expected a tread pattern like this uh to wear down extremely fast but it seems to be some of the longest lasting rubber that I've ever seen. So it continues to surprise me in terms of what uh, Nike can do with the rubber outsoles uh, in the Vaporfly. So at this point with this shoe at 115 miles, I probably won't be racing any marathons in this shoe at this age. And it's not necessarily because of the age of the shoe at 115 miles. I think it's got plenty of life in it. Uh, I just have other options. I probably would prefer to race in the Vaporfly Next Percent. I could easily see running, racing and running a half marathon in this shoe, even still at 115 miles. For me, how I'll use this is for long runs and for any speed work or interval work that's gonna be out on the roads or on pavement, not necessarily something that I would want to use for the track, but something where I'm gonna be doing long miles with speed work in there or faster intervals in there. This is definitely a shoe that I'm gonna be reaching for. And I still love the way it looks, even at 115 miles, the fly knit is starting to get discolored in certain areas and the midsole is starting to get a little bit uh, all crinkled up and a little bit discolored but that just shows how much love I've put into the shoe. And I think it just starts to look better with age. So I've been really happy with this particular Vaporfly flying it. And I look forward to a lot more miles and time with the shoe. If you have any other questions about Vaporfly 4% flying it or any of the other Vaporfly, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys more about it down there. Before I go, I do want to talk to you guys about a new cherry runner for this week. This week it's Ryan Schultz and he's gonna be running the Savannah Marathon in early November and raising money for St. Jude. I was very happy to donate $70 to Ryan's fundraising efforts. And I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making all the way to the end of the video and I will see you tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?